And in this video, what we're going to do is kind of give the impression of a macro through C++. So that way we're going to have a blueprint callable function that is able to have multiple execution pins coming out of it that you can link to. Now this is very handy for simple things like booleans as well as things like this where they're basically kind of outputting an enum. So I can give you an example here. So we're going to be doing two different types. One's going to be using a boolean. That's going to be the first one. And the second one is going to actually be using an enum. So here is an example of me using one with an enum. So I made a function called locally controlled. And basically, if you're locally controlled, this pin will fire. If you are a remote client, then this pin will fire. Now, we want to have the same effect, but we're going to be doing this for a function that I have called is suppressed. So I'm going to be replacing it to be using this style. So basically, you can do this for all of your booleans and any of them that you want where you want to have basically multiple output pins that have several different names to them. So we're going to replace this function with a blueprint called by one. So we remove the need for the branch. So we're basically removing uh, two different functions and calls, I guess you could say, not function calls, but two different things into one. And it should clean it up quite a bit, look a lot nicer and be just a little bit faster. So to begin, let's head over to the function that you want to set it up with. So in my case, it is is suppressed and we can leave this the exact same. So I'll walk you through it. It's just a Boolean. It's, right now it's a blueprint pure. We want to make sure it is a blueprint callable function because blueprint pures do not work with this. And all we do inside the implementation is just return true, basically whether or not the muzzle is a suppressor. And if the muzzle is invalid, we just return false. Very basic and straightforward. Now to set this up to use two execution pins instead of just returning a Boolean for us to perform a branch on, what we need to do is we need to add a meta. And we're going to set this meta to equal expand bool as executions. And we want to give this a value of return value. Now return value is going to give this here. I just realized I have an extra semicolon there. It's going to be referring to the actual return. So what we're going to do now is just simply close down our editor, recompile, and check it. Okay, so we compiled and I want to point something out. So what I had just noticed was I had this initially set as a constant. And basically anytime when I was trying to recompile and relaunch, it would crash once it would get close to it. So make sure your function is not a constant. Anyways, now let's go ahead and view the function. So inside of play fire sound, here you can see is our new function is suppressed. And if I refresh it, we now should not have a return value. So is suppressed. You can see we have a true and a false output. So we can replace our branch with the is suppressed function, just like so. Now we can compile and save and let's go to test. And warning, this might be a little loud. So there's unsuppressed. And there's suppressed. So the both execution pins are working as intended. Okay, now that you've seen how to return basically a true or false like this, I want to show you actually two more different things that you can do. So for starters, we're going to convert this play or this is suppressed fire or this is suppressed function to return suppressed and not suppressed. So we're going to have basically two different outputs here. And on top of that, I want to show you two different ways that you can actually achieve this, uh, basically achieve this result. So one is going to be via a parameter. The other one is again going to be through a return value. In this way, it'll also allow you to have an infinite number. Well, I'm sure there's a limit of these execution outputs. So to begin, let's go ahead and go back to our function is suppressed. And what we're going to be using here is actually an enum instead. So we're not going to be using a Boolean. So the first one we're going to do is actually going to be returning this enum. So this will remain unchanged, except for expand bool as executions will be expand enum as executions. No, we need to make an enum. So I'm going to head over to my data types here and I'm going to create a new enum. So you enum of blueprint type. And I'm not a fan of that autofill blueprint type. And we're going to do enum class E suppressed. And I'm going to make it of the type U and date. And I want to have two of these. So suppressed 
not suppressed. And I'll just give a random example of blah, blah, blah. That'll be our third one, because why not? This is an example. Okay, so next up, let's make this return the type E suppressed. So instead of returning a bool, we're now returning E suppressed. And what we want to do is we want to return based upon this condition. So I'm going to rewrite this function a bit. So it's going to be is valid muzzle. And if the muzzle is a suppressor, then we want to return E suppressed suppressed because again we are in fact a suppressor otherwise we want to return not suppressed okay so once we have that up we have our enum as a return we have our expand bool as execution set to return value let's change this to or sorry expand not i don't know what i said we want to expand enum as execution and again it's set to return value so it's going to be our return value and we are returning or whichever one we want based upon our condition. So let's relaunch and see what happens. And again, make sure it is not a constant function and it is blueprint callable. Okay, let's head back into the R editor and here's our is suppressed. So I'm gonna delete it and recall is suppressed. So now you can see we have suppressed, not suppressed and blah, blah, blah. So we have all three of our conditions here. So we can compile, save, and everything will still work all the same. Just like that. So we know we are good to go there. So now that we have that, let's move on to the last one that I'm going to show you. And that's going to be doing basically have the exact same node, except this time, instead of it being a return value, it's going to be through an output parameter. So what I mean by that is it, these are going to be returning void and it's going to be set through an output parameter or basically a variable that's by reference in our, well, as a parameter to our function. So E suppressed is now going to be void, and we want to pass in as a parameter by reference E suppressed by reference, and we want to give this a name that matches up with what we have in here. So I'm going to call this one my, I guess you could say, executions or execution. So just like that. So let's copy this, rechange the return type to void, give it its parameter, and we're going to set execution, I spelled that wrong, to equal suppressed if it's suppressed, and then we return. Then I'm going to set execution to equal not suppressed if it is not suppressed. So now we can close down the editor again and relaunch and see what happens. All right, let's relook at it. And there we go. So we have the exact same result, given that we are now using a parameter instead of a return value. So I hope that that all was helpful to you. If you found any of this useful, please consider checking out my Patreon, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patrons using Unreal Engine with C++. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord. That's also linked down below. And if you're interested in this product that I'm working on, it is part of my Ultimate FPS template which you can find on the Epic Marketplace, which is also linked in the description. So I will see you in the next video.